Hi, Jelly Cake Lap. This is my first review video. The game I'm reviewing today is kind of a game. Um, you'll notice that I don't have a bunch of games in my background. Uh, I, I love videos with reviewers. Um, Angry Video Game Nerd, you'll look at the background, you'll see everything. From Sega Saturn to regular NES games, Pat the NES Punk is famous, of course, for all of his NES games. I have this one, Mario 2, because I'm awesome right? Of course, I got PS2 games. That's right, Sly Cooper. GameStop, right? So, you know, I'm a value gamer too. Um, I have this little one. Uh, I married my wife and she brought this out. I think that's pretty sweet. I'm not overly, like, braggadocious, but right? <laughs> pretty great. Um, that also brings me to this. I am married. I'm a 40-year-old married gamer. Um, but the most, oh my god, my biggest and favoritest part of my collection is for the GameCube. And now, I haven't sealed it. But I keep it out because I like to play it. So, because I'm a gamer. Here it is. That's right. Don't you judge me. Best game ever. Next to... The crown jewel of my collection. That's right. Hello Kitty. Roller Rescue. It's probably pound for pound the greatest game I've ever played on the GameCube. Um, I heard there was a game called uh, Eternal something or other. Pretty good. Hello Kitty. Roller Rescue. Bats Maru level. Blows your mind. Footage. Now, if I can steal some YouTube footage that has that, I'll put that up there. But if I don't, I won't. This actual review is about Firewatch. Firewatch. Okay, so I, my wife and I, uh, who just recently celebrated Valentine's Day, my wife Stephanie and I, we went out and we saw Deadpool. Got me this shirt. And, uh... She also got me Firewatch and Deadpool for the PS3 on the PSN network. I played Firewatch. I beat it. Uh, well, I did not beat that game. You can't beat Firewatch. It doesn't have... Oh, good Lord. Look, man, you can't beat a game like Firewatch, just like you can't beat a game like Gone Home or Depression Quest or that uh, game about dysmorphia or any of the number of other games that are out there that, and I did this because, yeah, I'm a sarcastic jerk off, but fuck that game. Depression Quest is not a game. It's a lesson about depression in a format that goon gamers can understand. Sorry, that's what it is. I've heard it's very fun, but you don't see them fucking let's playing it on Game Grumps because it's fucking depressing. And while it opens your eyes if you have depression, I personally suffer, suffer from dysthymic disorder, so I take the fucking drugs and I go through all the bullshit that's in it. I don't want to be reminded of it when I'm going into my escapism. So, Depression Quest, great game. If you haven't heard, if you don't know a lot about depression, you make a fucking bunch of jokes about people with depression, go play that game. It'll teach you a good lesson about it. Gone Home. If you told me the game before I played it was about a teenage bisexual and her friends and a lesbian and all this other stuff, I would have said, oh, cool. I'll set that aside and play it sometime after I play every other thing that I like to play. But nobody says that. Everyone says, oh, you just got to play it. And it's never women who tell me this, by the way. None of my girl friends, which there are many, and none of my female gamer friends ever say, oh, my God, gone home. That's the fucking game. That's my jam. Although I do hear a lot of my my girl gamer friends, my sister included, um, saying, Bioshock Infinite, holy shit, you gotta play that game. Both of those games have a social message. Only I can beat or even complete Bioshock Infinite and feel a sense of not being told what I'm supposed to feel about the situation. Which brings me to Firewatch. Firewatch is from the team, um, when I brought up Bioshock for a reason, from the team that split off of Irrational Games and created Gone Home and wanted to do these kind of immersive um, experiences where you're wandering around and touchy-feely things, reading files, and basically all the shit that's optional in a real video game you get to do as the game in these games. When I saw the trailer for Firewatch at E3, I was like, holy shit, that seems cool. And if you remember the trailer, I'm going to cut in with a little bit of the trailer, um, a specific moment 
right now. At the comms. What? I'm out here and the wire is cut clean through. Wait, you're already there? You're not in your tower? No, I'm not. Then who is? You see that shit? Right? You gotta get back to your booth. You're right in your booth now. I'm not in the booth. Holy shit! Get back to the booth! Okay? If that gave you a, what the fuck's going on? I gotta fucking find out. Do not waste your money. I'm not even gonna spoil it for you, because you'll spoil it for yourself when you think about it for two fucking seconds. There'll be, there's a narrative element in this game. Isolation. Just because you don't feel like animating assets doesn't make it fucking isolation. Alien Isolation, apparently, had fucking thousands of people in the game. You could walk across people, you got to meet people before and after your journey. There are things during your journey, there's elements to the game. It's not just an environment and a bunch of fucking uh, log files. This is a bunch of fucking elements and log files and a woman on the radio telling you what to do, which ultimately, by the way, I'll get to that, means that you have you can't beat this game. You can finish it like you finish a shitty novel that isn't shitty. But, or a movie that your girlfriend took you to and you both thought it was going to be kind of good you're like, oh man, that fucking looked pretty good. But then you end up sitting there going, oh, well, great. And if, you're, if your girlfriend's like my wife, she figured that shit out in like three seconds. So I lied. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to lie. There, there's spoilers. Here's a spoiler, okay? There's a, a, a plot. In fact, the fucking, the fucking commercial is about the fucking plot, one of the plots of the games, where you interrupt these two people, this group of teens, which ends up being two girls, naked, skinny dipping by themselves at Yellowstone Park. You stop them from shooting off fireworks because it's a fire hazard. They turn up missing. Holy shit! What happened? You get to their campsite. It's fucking shredded to pieces. There's no blood, though. So it's shredded to pieces. Either they shredded it themselves or a deer stomped the shit out of it. Who knows? But they're not there. They turn up missing. And you're like, holy fuck, did I kill them? Is it like this is a crazy Fight Club-esque mystery? No, the fuck it's not. Okay? None of the shit, none of the cool shit in your head goes, oh, fuck, this is going to be fucked up. I got to take pictures and I got to fucking make sure that nothing bad happens because I got to be on my shit. I got to be on my guard for this fucking, this very clear, like, sense that I'm a, I'm, I'm the, um, I'm the, the non, like, uh, trustworthy narrator in this fucking game. But ultimately, the girls are fine. They turn up somewhere else and they're kind of a side story. In fact, this whole game is about finding shit, looking at it, and asking somebody, asking, oh, god damn it, asking the, your friend on the phone what this shit is, because you don't know shit. <sighs> nothing means anything, and at the end of the game, there's no fucking payoff. Nothing. There's nothing. Nothing at the end of the game, okay? Things happen. Things happen, you guess, that are going to happen before you even have come across them, and the fucking triumphant moment of that is when you stumble across the big fucking surprise, the devastating fucking reveal, and you've already guessed it, and you're prepared yourself kind of emotionally for it, because it's the kind of bullshit manipulation you see in bullshit short fiction and bullshit movies that think they're deep, but then end up being just a bunch of pretentious bullshit. I use the word bullshit a lot because when I stopped the game, I turned it off. It was everything I could do from not screaming bullshit at the top of my lungs when I watched the fucking thing. The credit sequence is cool. Um, but here, here's the thing about this game that didn't make me angry or even a little bit piqued my anger until I got to the credits list of this game. So... <sighs> I know the motivation behind making games that aren't violent, that don't have, um, like, this concept of women as merely one-dimensional sexual beings uh, fit only for men's amusement. I get that, that there should be games like that. In fact, this is one of those games that's kind of like that. But that's not how they sold that shit. That's not what it was sold to me as. And I get kind of the feeling that 
they want this reaction, like, oh, fuck this game. Don't fuck this game. And play this game and enjoy this game. Buy this game for five bucks or less because it's not worth twenty dollars. It's not long enough to be worth twenty dollars. It's a fucking ripoff at that. Um, but when I thought about what I did in the game and what was going on in the game, I get the message that I'm being told. Your character is male. Um, not only male, uh, you get to see his dick. Not many times in any games have I ever seen a dick that was basically a dick, and which was actually nice. You, you, they didn't make it a funny dick or a crazy dick. It's just a dick. But it sent a message. It was like, ha-ha, gamer! How do you feel looking at a dick when you weren't expecting it? I'm like, oh, that was kind of weird. <laughs> never saw a, never saw a game show a dude's dick before. Okay, let's play the game. But I didn't realize that that was supposed to slap me into, oh, I've got to be ready for the message and the lesson. Fuck you. If I want a lesson, I'll play Q-Bert. You know what the lesson is? Fuck purple snakes. All right? This game's trying to tell me that, well, well one, you masculine man, you, uh, men are stupid. They have to be told everything about everything. Um, because literally everything you do, it prompts you to call this woman and ask her advice. Holy fucking shit. If this was a woman, well, actually there was already a game about this and they were right. It was bullshit then and it's bullshit now. This is fucking forestry other M. This is the Metroid game for men being told what to do by a woman over and over and over again. Only they actually form a relationship. You form kind of a friendship with this person on the other end of the phone. Ultimately, I was like, man, I'd really like to meet this person. That, like, we could actually talk and meet and fucking go, wow, wasn't that fucked up? Or, wow, wasn't that a fucking adventure that we had? Nope. You'll never get to see them. But I think that was mostly because of money. Anybody you, you see in the game that's a model is not yourself. You don't see yourself. The, the uh, skinny dipping girls, which is appropriate because they're teenagers, you see them off in the distance as silhouettes. But low-res pixel silhouettes that they didn't have to fucking put any assets into, which kind of tells me what this is really all about. And the guy, in, the guy at the very end when you leave. But motherfucker, you have to clear the brush. Walk all over the fucking place. The entire time that woman is sitting there telling you what to do. And you do it. You assume that she's smarter than you, um, because she is, because your character's kind of a fucking dummy. Um, you also don't get to be a good person uh, as a man. You get to be told that you're shitty. From the very beginning, there are choices you make before you start the game to determine what's bringing you to the game. Um, here's the thing that really pissed me off, okay? And it's not like I'm an outrageous fucking video game reviewer, piss me off bullshit thing. It's like a real life bullshit, piss you off thing. My wife uh, has a disability that's very similar to the one they depict um, in the woman that's in this game. Your wife in the game comes down with Alzheimer's. My wife had a problem, um, a severe issue with a uh, sort of tumor-like problem in her brain. And I'm only bringing this up because this game kind of throws it out there and then makes you make shitty decisions the whole way down. You can't make decisions that are loving. You can't make decisions that are fucking normal. You only get to make decisions. It's like, do you beat your wife or do you drink and then beat your wife? Do you abandon your wife or do you just say fuck it and don't do anything at all? You get to be a shitty fucking person in this game, but in a realistic way, which, by the way, creators of this game, that doesn't mean that Grand Theft Auto V is worse because I get to pretend punch a random stranger in the back of the fucking head and do actual violence to them. No, I get to be an actual shitty person. Like, this this realism that you have in this game portrays me even more so. As a man, the most fucking shitty guy I can be. And women, if you play this game, you get to be a shitty man. Won't that be great? Anyway, this game sucks because it is a fucking, it's like a, it's like a fucking, um, Whitman sampler. You remember those, the fucking chocolates and shit? You pull out a chocolate and you bite into it and you're like, oh, that's just fucking walnut paste. What the fuck? This is like biting into a chocolate and getting, I don't know, wheat germ. Not a fucking game. Uh, a long narrative. Very entertaining if you're willing to listen and aren't feeling like you got slapped with a fish with the message by the end of it, which is, yeah, guys are kind of dumb. Men are bad. Isn't it weird that we showed you a dick for some reason? Yeah. Yeah, game makers, it was pretty weird. 
It's on the PlayStation Network and on PC. I think you can get on Xbox One eventually. I don't know. I don't fucking give a shit because I'm never going to play it again. But on the other hand, it was kind of a trophy horse dream because if you play that shit, you will get 100%. Platinum, motherfucker! That's right. This is Jelly Cake Lab out. And I'll see you next week with another game. Let me see if I can get out there and do that thing with you.